Hi, this is Digital Femme and welcome to my channel. So this is another one of those videos where I'm filming from my bedroom and that's probably because I've been sitting in my studio office for like practically all day and I just needed to change scenery. But, you know, who really cares? Uh, so today I just wanted to talk about, I guess, life in general. And I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me and this whole pandemic thing that's been happening since March, I thought that, you know, it was just going to be easy. It was just going to quickly pass. I remember March, um, they were they were instilling like a two week lockdown or something and then they extended it or, you know, maybe not two weeks, but they did say a couple of weeks and then they ended up extending it and then summer finally came and I they started to let off and we can and malls started to open again and it was almost like okay they're just going to slowly open although there was always rumors of the second wave and i guess we are in the second wave right now i don't really know what to make of it because like i've said in a few videos in the past to me whatever is going on that I somehow catch light of in the news through my social media feeds. It may be what it is, but in my mind, in my perception, in my in my reality, in my space, it does not exist. And I don't mean to sound arrogant. I don't mean to sound in denial. I just... I've always limited myself from contact with people anyway before this whole social distancing and it wasn't really it was more of like not necessarily a uh, I wouldn't call it a conscious choice but because I work remotely and I did used to work you know take my laptop to cafes and work there I just ended up staying at home working because I literally created a nice workplace environment for me to stay, which is pretty much creating an urban jungle in a 400 square foot apartment so that when I was working, I would be surrounded by foliage, green plants, and it made me feel that I was outside. So yeah, I personally, Okay, no, I have heard of acquaintances and friends that have caught COVID and they did say, you know, it was rough, but they're fine. And that's about it. Do I know anyone personally who have passed away? No, I know that one of my friend's aunts had passed away, supposedly. Um, I mean, no, she passed away, but... I don't know if they lumped it up as COVID because she was rather old. Um, so like, did she have cor comorbidities, you know, and stuff like that. So I guess what I mean to say is, is that as much as I am just thinking positively and living in a state of a normal and not really letting the new normal affect me in a way it is, and it's because I'm wondering how long is this really going to last? Like we're already in December and they're already starting to lock down larger cities uh, across Canada. I, ha I, you know, I don't look at the news. I don't look for the news. It just is served up to me through feeds, like social media feeds, like I, you know, I do subscribe or follow a few news accounts on Twitter. So sometimes I get those notifications on my mobile phone and I'll just happen to catch like a tagline. So that's pretty much how it is. And, you know, and I understand 
all about taglines or, or headlines. It, it's pretty much like clickbait, may or may not be clickbait. But yeah, I mean like, really, I can't imagine what 2021 will be like. Like, is this gonna just continue on to 2021? Like, come on. And then they're going to, now there's like talk of, there's always been talk of a vaccine since it started. But now there is even more talk of vaccines and all these pharmaceuticals or private entities are racing to get a type of viable vaccine into the market, which really it's, um, you know, I don't know how long their clinical trials have gone, but whatever vaccines they're pumping out, we still don't know the long-term effects. And I know I'm just saying like, yeah, I don't know guys. I just wanted to come on and just talk to who I guess to myself because I'm doing this video uh, but yeah I mean it's starting to annoy me as much as I don't let it affect me I will say that if I can I mean if I allow what's going on to affect me the number one emotion would be annoyance it's pretty annoying um, how all this is coming about. Now, is it annoying that people are dying from it? I didn't say that. Okay. And I don't even know why I did the air quotes. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just, this, it's just annoying. It's annoying the news and I don't know why they have to keep reporting what regions and how many COVID cases, because what, what are they really qualifying as a COVID case? Like people that test, po like what, right? I don't know. Like, I think rather than them reporting deaths or cases, maybe they should just reporting like people who, I don't know, like these people who entered the hospital with COVID symptoms or test and test and tested positive for COVID, like COVID symptoms and were positive for COVID and, and how many recovered. Just saying, like, I, like I said, I am not really following up on stuff. I do just get notifications from the news from my mobile phone and I just get to read the headlines. So I'm just basing it off on that. Yeah, it's just really, it's annoying. It's annoying to me. Anyway, what else? Oh, yeah, and then again, I'm thinking about, like, I don't know. I thought that I was going to move back to Toronto this summer, this fall, and it didn't happen. Um, I say that I didn't make an effort to move this year because especially when this whole COVID started to come, this whole lockdown COVID thing happened in March, I kind of said, okay, well, let's see, maybe it'll lift June, July. And it, well, it kind of did, but then by that time it was like, mm, I don't know. I just, something just told me not to put too much effort into moving back um, this summer and fall. And I didn't. And sure enough, Toronto, is going on down on a major lockdown i think today or tomorrow it's like november 21 22 or 23 i don't know but and i so what's the what was the point whereas in the city that i live in now in canada which is in the middle of canada we're still we're not under lockdown we're still able to dine in with safe social distancing of course and and such the only new rule or, or um, yeah, rule that has become mandatory is to wear masks in indoor public spaces, right? That just started maybe two weeks ago, or two or three weeks ago, which really wasn't the which wasn't the case for this whole year, um, unlike other bigger cities in Canada. So yeah, I mean, the twenty twenty is ending, and boy, what a year! And I was thinking that 2020 would be a really great year to kick off an amazing decade. I still feel that, 
I still feel that it's going to be an amazing decade. Uh, I'm hopeful that 2021 will bring on certainly new sets of opportunities. And I feel like we really have to create those opportunities for ourselves, especially more so now where we need to not reinvent, but if we can just, I don't know, like find a skill or a passion that we we wanted that we know we're good at we want to do i feel like i'm going around circles here and somehow just be able to share that with one another and in forms of like a service or something then maybe i know that there's a lot of people who have lost jobs have gotten laid off and and or have um job hours really decreased and obviously that's affecting them financially. So I'm just very fortunate and blessed that I'm able to work remotely and have steady income and we're just so busy. I'm just so fortunate in that sense. And I feel like the reason why is because I am in a, I wouldn't call it industry because it's not really, I'm in a space where you can try to create opportunities uh, that hopefully with a little bit of effort and really good strategy can grow into something monetary and not just for myself but for the people that or for the team that um, is also partaking of these projects. I know it's very vague, isn't it? Very, very, very vague. And another thing, um, I didn't realize how wonderful hamsters are. <laughs> so I have, I ended up getting a hamster October 13th. I think it was Friday or Thursday, October, no, November 13th. And it is a Russian dwarf hamster, I feel. That's what it said in the glass on the pet store when I got them. Although I did read that pet stores do not really sell true Russian dwarf hamsters. There's usually a hybrid. You'd have to get a true Russian dwarf hamster from a breeder. So I don't know how I'm going to have to call the pet store to find out if that's really, really true. Um, anyway, and I don't know why hamsters are so popular with kids. I mean, I can understand why they're so popular with kids because they're, they're so cute. They are caged. So rather than parents buying their children a cat or a dog, you know, it's at least it satisfies the cuteness that a child needs for, in a pet and it can be contained. I really don't think hamsters are the right pets for little children. After I've watched a number of YouTube videos, I realized that there's really a lot of care involved. I mean, you don't, it's just because there's like a lot of the, a lot of the YouTube channels that have had hamsters for years and years and really understand hamsters and the care that's required. They all say that just because a hamster is small doesn't mean that they, it, it's enough for them to be in a small space. I've said it before and the other YouTube channels say too that it depends where you live, but for the different types of hamsters, the the least minimum, the same thing, the minimum amount of floor space, the minimum amount of floor space that let's say my type of hamster needs um, for a healthy environment, like healthy space for them to run around is, is 450 square inches of floor space and that is about a 40 gallon tank and that's minimum if if you can do larger then that's that's amazing and you see a lot of these parents buy their children little hamsters in these little um hamster cages that are really colorful uh just because it's all about marketing and cute and cuteness and they're being sold in the pet stores but actually those cages are not are very dangerous for hamsters because they're not even anyway yeah uh, there's just a lot of care involved and 
you know, yes, hamsters are in the wild, but I, I read that or I heard that there were there are five types of hamsters that are domesticated. Um, but even so, they still have their own. I don't know. I got, my hamster, I'm just looking at this way because this is where the 40, 40 gallon tank is where it's I created a habitat for my hamster. His name is Boris Hudson. <laughs> and I'm just I can't imagine like I, I as far as I know. I know hamsters or small animals don't live long and because I, you know, put it upon myself to have one in my home, then the least I can do is to ensure that they are happy for as long as they live and which isn't very long, but I hope with the right type of diet well-balanced diet and you know making my hamster putting things in his I guess living space where he can be entertained and he's not bored then he can at least have a really happy life anyway I guess that's all I wanted to say I'm still doing this one 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 thousand day challenge and that's choosing to do one thing for one hour a day more or less for a thousand days straight and what I've chosen to do was um, create a video and upload it on a YouTube channel for one day for a thousand days straight. I did do the one one sixty six day channel uh, challenge, but once I passed, once I uploaded sixty six videos um, every day for sixty six days, or one video every day for sixty six days, then it's like oh, you know, it was like anticlimactic. Like it, I wasn't enough, so I I tasked myself tasked myself to do the thousand days. So here it is. So I think this is my 139th video, or I don't know, I'm thinking it's my 140th video. To, I think it's my 140th video today. I have to back check. So hence the video. Um, I don't, I used to have, I, I don't script my, you know, my videos. I don't write talking points. I basically figure out what I want to say, maybe three minutes before I put the video on but with with these past videos I would just wing it like I wanted to do this laid back kind of just you know push the record button and just talk although I feel like I haven't really been laid back about things because I'm still feeling the effort in my brain to like come up with something which I do not want to do like I really just want to just relax and blab right because I can and I know um maybe it's not the best way to grow a channel i don't know if growing a channel i mean sure i want this channel to grow right who would want you know a youtube channel be to be monetized but i really feel that's not my priority i mean i know that's not my priority for jump starting this youtube channel and doing the one one sixty six day challenge and then the one 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 thousand day challenge it's just really for me to get comfortable with the sound of my voice getting comfortable with just myself being on video because i feel like i'm preparing for something so this is all in preparation and i also wanted to be able to uh talk on the fly talk off the cuff and cut down on my filler words and all these ums and stuff and i know i still have a lot to do in terms of improving on that and I'm going to be doing that. And I also noticed that if you do videos really late at night and you're tired, then you're more likely to put filler words and do ums and it's not really quite a smooth, you know, whatever, like smooth transition between topics, which I find I'm finding now. So there you go. Uh, so if, you know, if you, if there's anything in this video that resonated with you, then consider giving it a thumbs up and do subscribe because I always say that if there isn't one or two videos in my video library that doesn't grab your attention like the title doesn't and you need to scroll back like maybe past the 66 videos and down because I really that's when I kind of like more more or less shared really interesting stories that I normally wouldn't share with my network um just like personal stuff and now i just i'm more it's more like generic topics so i don't know i might have to get back into that sharing personal stuff kind of thing we'll see but there should be one or two video titles that would resonate with you and that's why you would consider subscribing because i'm going to pump out 
you know, really more interesting topics. Let's see. So do consider subscribing and thanks for watching um, and just visiting the channel. So wherever you are in this world, have a great day, have a great evening and bye-bye. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.